One of the reasons why I started a YouTube channel is to show other people, maybe like yourself, how to simplify your hunting and fishing experiences. And the reason why I think it's important to simplify things is because in my own life, wherever I've made something simpler, I've increased its quality. So today, I'm going to show you my entire setup using a spinning rod and what I use to catch brook trout. I only take this when it comes to brook trout fishing. I could literally just take a tiny car and that's all I'll need. I'm going to go through this and break it down for you and explain why it's important and why you don't need anything else when fishing for brook trout. I'm going to start over here with my waders and the reason why I use them for brook trout in particular is simple. I don't want to buy two pair of waders. I think it's a waste of time and money searching and purchasing two pair of waders having one for fishing and one for hunting. Where I go fishing for brook trout it's very cold water. It's spring fed water. It's not warm. It doesn't even get warm even in the middle of July here in Wisconsin and brook trout streams. So I go with 1400 gram Thinsulate duck hunting waders. I use these all year round. It does get warm, but I just wear a t-shirt underneath instead of warm hunting clothes like you would when you're waterfowl hunting. Now, what do I do with this cooler? It seems really obvious that I would use a cooler to put fish in it to take home. And that's true, I do every now and then keep brook trout, take them home and eat them. In my opinion, they're the best tasting fish in the world. That's just my opinion. But the problem with a cooler is that when you're fishing streams for brook trout, you're not gonna carry a cooler around with you, but I have a solution for that. My solution is this backpack cooler. Now I've done a video on this and it explains why I use a backpack cooler for fishing. But simply put, I wear this backpack cooler while I'm fishing, it's small, it keeps things cold. If I do catch fish and put them in here, I take a small ice pack and I place it inside. The reason why that works so well is this will work until you get back to the vehicle. Once I get back to my vehicle, I take the fish out of here and I place them in a cooler that's going to keep them colder than this would and for a longer period of time. Right here are the three ice packs I use. This one's a medium sized ice pack that goes in my backpack like this. And this one is a smaller ice pack that you'd put in your lunchbox or something for work that also goes in my backpack here. The reason why I use two ice packs is so that I can keep the fish in between each ice pack. Keep them surrounded by the coldness. You do not want to let any part of that fish get warm because the meat becomes mushy and you don't want to eat it after that. Keeping the fish cold is a huge, huge priority, especially for trout. Now with this larger one over here, I keep this ice pack inside the cooler and I keep this inside my vehicle until I get back to the vehicle when I'm done fishing. Then what I do, once I'm back at the vehicle, I take my trout out of this backpack bag, I set the trout inside the cooler over here, I take the other two ice packs from there and set them on top of the trout. So now I've got three ice packs, my trout, put the lid on top, they're good to go for several hours or until I get home. All right, so this backpack right here, I've talked about this before in a video, why I use it, why I think it's important. I've received lots of questions over the last year about what I do when I catch fish, when I'm kayak fishing, when I'm waiting, how do I keep the fish from getting too warm, all these different things. What I'm gonna share with you is, I think it's very, very important to have some type of cooler with you when you're trout fishing, and that's why I use that backpack. I use that when I go pan fishing, I use it for a lot of applications. It doesn't only carry my gear, but holds the fish if you choose to keep them. All you have to do is go on to Amazon and type in backpack cooler. Click the one that's the best price and option for you. It's a great alternative to having a stringer or something else that you have to carry around with you while you're fishing. Over here on the side, what I do is I keep a garbage bag. I place the fish in the garbage bag and then into the backpack cooler. That keeps it really clean and neat and organized inside. I don't want fish slime getting all over inside my backpack cooler. It's a pain in the butt to clean out. Inside this bag is pretty simple. I've got a small bit of baits here, lots of spinners. On the other side, large spoons and spinners. I've also got some bare hooks and jigs over here in case I want to put minnows or worms and float those down the stream. Having a small tiny tackle box like this for trout is literally all you need. The other thing I have in here for me is this dry case right here. This dry case is important for a lot of reasons. You can put your keys in here. If you get a bigger one, you can put your phone in there, but I just use GoPro batteries in here. Most of you probably don't film while you go out fishing, so it's not gonna make a difference, but that's also what I put in there. That's what I keep in my backpack at all times. I know that some of you watching this video might be thinking, don't you need this or don't you need that? And my answer to you is probably no. Remember, this is what you need to catch fish, not what's more convenient, not what other people are telling you to take. I have a goal out there when I go fishing or hunting. Kill ducks, kill deer, 
and catch fish when I go fishing. That's it. So when I'm out in the woods and I'm trying to accomplish something, I'm out there for that goal and that's what my mind is focused on. Not gear, gadgets, what would make my life more convenient at the time. I'm trying to simplify my way to fish, not make it more complicated. Let's talk about the rod now. This is my favorite part of my fishing experience because I found a really sweet setup that's not going to cost a lot of money that will work, guaranteed. This reel right here is the Daiwa Reveros 1000 size. I've done an entire video reviewing this reel and why I believe every angler needs this reel regardless of how much money you have, regardless of what you like to fish for, it doesn't matter. It's a budget reel with great drag, perfect size for trout fishing. This is a size 1000 but you can get larger sizes if you want and if you're catching native brook trout in Wisconsin like I am or any other place in the Midwest, you're not most likely going to catch huge brook trout so you don't need a big setup. This is what I use when I go fishing for trout almost 100% of the time. What I've done is I've taken four pound monofilament line and spooled it up on there. I wouldn't go any higher than that for native brook trout in this area in the Midwest. Now, if you're fishing in places where the brook trout get really big, over 12 inches, 16, 20 inches, crazy big, that's a different story. You probably want to up your gear a little bit as far as how heavy duty it is. So for catching native brook trout, four pound test is really all you need, spooled up in 1,000 size spinning reel. And last but not least, you'll notice I go with a trout series spinning rod by St. Croix. It's a six foot four inch spinning rod, fast action tip. The reason why I like fast action tips is if you look here, it's gonna spring back very quickly. So when you set the hook, the hooks penetrate the fish's mouth and it stays on. This is also a great budget rod. It's a great budget reel. It's a great budget rig altogether. If you pair up the Daiwa Reveros 1000 with the St. Croix Trout Series Spinning Rod, which is six foot four, light action by the way, you're gonna find you've got a really sweet rig here and you're gonna have a lot of success and you're gonna enjoy fishing a lot more. It's not expensive. The rod's about $100, the reel is about $50, and that's it. Now rods today go four, five, six, seven hundred dollars for super expensive ones. A hundred dollar rod is not a lot of money, especially if you fish several times a year and you can use the rod, hopefully for the rest of your life if you take care of it. Now this rod is a two piece rod, six foot four in length. You can divide it into two pieces and that fits great in the trunk of a car. Now why am I bringing that up? The reason why is because I think going trout fishing Putting in at bridges and wading up and down a stream is a really unique way to fish. It's a really fun way to fish in my opinion. Now don't get me wrong, I love being out in boats, kayaking, canoeing, so on and so forth. But what I really like to do, my favorite way to fish is to wade in the water, read current seams, find out where the eddies are, and catch fish that way. So in other words, you don't need a boat. You don't need to find a launch location. You don't need to pay launch fees. You're not going to go on this big lake where you got jet skis whipping around you. You need to find a bridge with a tiny stream that's got trout in it. Park your car off to the side. Doesn't matter what you drive. You could have a tiny little electric smart car. Wouldn't matter. You can go trout fishing because all you need are waders, a rod, and a small bag to handle all of your gear, which isn't much to begin with. There's one bit of equipment I didn't mention, a fishing net. So the reason why I didn't bring up a fishing net yet is simply because I usually don't take a fishing net when I go fishing. But if you do take a net, it's not a big deal. You can find pretty good deals on nets for like $20. They'll last many, many, many years if you take care of it. Bring it with you if you're afraid of losing fish. Most of the time I just hand net them and then I release them back into the water after I've wetted my hand. So that's it. Everything you need to catch native brook trout in a stream with a spinning rod. Use things you already have, adapt to the situation, and you're gonna have some luck. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by the Relentless Sportsman channel. Like I said, my name is Corey. I'm here to help you figure things out, all things fishing, hunting, and everywhere in between. I like to simplify things. I love sharing with you and others some simple ideas to make your life better in the woods or on the water. Stay tuned for another video coming up. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.